nuclear weapons are treated like pandemics as an abstract political debate until they become a very different reality. 27 years ago, there was a diplomatic row over a postage stamp. In November 1994, the U.S. Post Office announced plans to issue a series of collectible stamps commemorating key events in the Second World War. One of them depicted the mushroom cloud over Hiroshima. The design was simple. Accompanying the familiar tower of dust and smoke were the words, Atomic Bombs Hasten War's End, August 1945. After seeing this, the Japanese Prime Minister at the time, Tamichi Murayama, declared the design an affront to the feelings of his people. Hitoshi Motoshima, the mayor of Nagasaki, condemned it as a crude celebration of an indiscriminate massacre. Alarmed at the Rose potential to destabilize U.S. relations with what was then the world's second-largest economy, Bill Clinton personally intervened. He made a call from the White House, and the Postmaster General pulled the plug. If the controversy took the civvies at the post office by surprise, I don't blame them. In the years immediately following the Second World War, U.S. officials propagated images of mushroom clouds as symbols of military might and technological prowess, while suppressing photographs of the physical effects of the bombings. The sublime, almost romantic aerial views made their way into comics, advertising, film and news media, inviting abstracted wonder, not reflection on the enormity of the bomb's implications for humankind. They encouraged distance, a Harry Limes callousness. Do you really feel any pity for those tiny black dots, the remains of some of the 226,000 people killed in the attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, mixed in with the ash and debris? If some of those postal workers didn't, that's because they'd been taught not to. Yoshiaki Kitagawa almost became a black dot. A garrulous 20-year-old literature student at Kyoto University, he had returned to his home prefecture of Hiroshima to visit a family friend. Accompanying him was his younger sister Aiko, 16, who attended an all-girls high school in the city center. Yoshiaki had short legs that barely supported his weight, he had suffered polio as a child. As a result, he had never served in the army. All of his friends had gone to war and many had died. Yoshiaki, however, was inherently an optimist and dedicated himself to his studies, to his love of music and to his responsibilities as an elder brother. On the morning of August 6, Yoshiaki and Aiko were tugging on their shoes in the Genkan, the entrance hall, of their friend's house, when a blinding light pierced through the windows. What felt like a violent, indoor storm tore through the building, toppling everything in its path. The Kitagawas were lucky. They were far enough away from the blast to have suffered no immediate effects of the explosion, beyond a few bruises and cuts from broken glass. After checking on their host, who was also relatively unscathed, they started walking south towards the harbor, hoping to take a ferry to their family home on the nearby island of Osaki Shimojima. As they approached the epicenter of the atomic explosion, the scale of the disaster became clear, the city was on fire. Charred bodies covered the narrow residential streets and river banks. The wounded called for their mothers from deep in the rubble of demolished buildings. They trudged past Aiko's school. A girl she knew had been thrown against a wall with such force that her body now clung to it like a swatted fly. Yoshiaki, who needed crutches to walk, was exhausted, but he and his sister made it to the harbor before dark. There, they found no ferries or boats waiting. Among the dead and dying, they sat down and waited as Hiroshima burned. There was, for now, little else they could do. That August day was colorless. The sky, like the radioactive rain that left many people bed bound for months following the attack, had turned black, and it seemed to stain the city and everyone in it. It was like someone had smeared ink over Hiroshima. When they remembered the bombing, it was in black and white images. 75 years after the bombings, the only two instances of nuclear weapons being deployed on human beings are slipping from living memory. Few would contest the sentiment inscribed on Hiroshima's memorial cenotaph, rest in peace. The error shall not be repeated. Yet the abstraction of nuclear warfare makes the notion of it palatable for too many. The US, a signatory of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, currently plans to spend more than a trillion dollars on updating its arsenal over the coming decades. 
The RAF pilot Air Commodore, Alastair Mackey, once described the UK's Trident program as a stick-on hairy chest virility symbol. That's all nuclear weapons have ever been, in our case, cosplay machismo bought at the cost of £205 billion. Think of that figure and, what it means for successive UK governments to have prioritised advanced weapons programmes over, say, pandemic readiness, when pandemics have long been placed on a higher tier of security risk than nuclear warfare. And, picture that stick on hairy chest whenever a willingness to push the nuclear button is presented as a mark of seriousness for political leaders. What the cloud on that stamp truly represents isn't progress or power, but a tragic and horrifying mistake. Did you enjoy this video? If yes, then help us grow by giving us a like and subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss any of the heavy facts updates.